Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the beautiful countryside outside of Lisbon, Portugal, uh, where Porsche has invited me. And by invited, I mean they flew me here and they put me up. They've invited me to drive the all-new 718 Boxster and Boxster S. Uh, for this video, I said... Give me the car with everything on it. So this is the Boxster S with PASM, with Sport Chrono, and with ceramic brakes and PDK. This one is as nutty as they go. And uh, this is the spec of the car that just ran a 742 around the Nordschleife, which is 16 seconds faster than the old car. Uh, this car starts at 68 grand, and uh, this one fully loaded is probably in the 80s, although I don't have an exact number. The big news, of course, the four-cylinder engines. They have dropped the sixes, and now they have turbo four-cylinders. Some of you are going to go, Porsches don't ever have four-cylinders, and you have forgotten about the 912, the 944, the 968, the 924, and of course, the 718 that this car is inspired by. The big question on everyone's mind, including mine, is, well, it's a two and a half liter turbo flat four. Does that mean it sounds like an STI? Kind of. Uh, it sounds a little like an STI at low RPM. You can hear the rumbling going on. But, in typical Porsche fashion, uh, the higher you rev it, the better it gets. So, let's, uh, let's go for a drive on this beautiful back road. Alright. Now, unlike the regular Boxster, the S gets uh, the variable vane turbo geometry like the 991 Turbo has. And that means it can change the angle of the fins for either better low-end torque or higher top-end power. Uh, because of that, uh, this turbo motor doesn't die at 5,500 RPM like so many of the other turbo motors do. It makes a lot more torque uh, than the old car. This one makes 350 horsepower and 309 pound-feet of torque from 1900 RPM all the way up to 4500 RPM. And I've reached the end of this road. Where should I go? Mm, left. So low-end torque and then you come on the power nicey nice oh I have made a very poor decision here regarding directions I'm now in town hmm all right my bad on that so let's throw it in auto and I'll tell you how it is around town it's torquey this is uh I apologize for making such a poor directional choice here we're gonna go back to the fun road this is what happens when I film somewhere I don't know about uh, what's really cool if you get the Sport Chrono is you have this button on the steering wheel called Sport Response. And so what that is is you can just be cruising around, whatever, and then you press Sport Response and for 20 seconds it goes into maximum performance mode. So you want to do a pass, you want to make a move, you just hit that, you're good to go. I'm going back to manual. This guy's stoked. This engine is, is a really neat engine. There's a lot of high-tech stuff going on with it. It has air-to-water intercoolers with this extra special loop for the coolant to go through. So you get a nice cold charge no matter how hard you're running it. The S actually runs less boost than the standard Boxster, but with that variable vane turbo, it makes more power. Also, more displacement. Red line is 7,200 RPM, and believe you me, it pulls all the way to it. It doesn't die. And of course, the chassis is more rigid. The suspension's been redesigned. And my favorite thing about it is, is really just how balanced it is without being abusive. There's a lot of cars out there that use stiffness to mean fast and competent. No. The mark of a good rigid chassis is that you can still have 
a soft damper and get around the corner, but chassis rigidity holds it all together, and that's what this car's got a whole lot of. See, even on these bumpy roads, it just, it's fine. It's totally, totally fine. Uh, the base curb weight of the, the, the lightest Boxster is around 2,900 pounds with a manual. This one with everything is around 3,100 pounds. Uh, so not, not like Lotus light, but still pretty light. And as you can see, red line is still way up where you want it. Once around the roundabout and then back up the fun road. It's got torque vectoring, which honestly, if you leave it in sport, is like totally seamless. You just never know it's there. These ceramic brakes are wonderfully powerful, but what you really notice is the, the torque. There's so much extra of it, and it's all over the power band. Whether you're down low or up high, it just, it, this thing does zero to 60 and four flat and runs a mid 12 quarter on the way to 178 miles an hour. I just took it up a, uh, a little runway and I did 255 kilometers and just, just over a mile. Launch control kicks you a little harder now than it used to. In fact, why don't I just stop here right after this corner and I'll demonstrate a launch for you. Because why not? It's a little uphill so instrumented uh, testing isn't really accurate but I'll just show you how it goes. All right. Maximum performance, left foot brake, right foot gas, 6,000 RPM, dump. Surface isn't great, so I just did a nice little burnout. Woo -hoo -hoo. And I'm out of the U.S., so I can tell you that was 100 miles an hour right there. So even on a, on a loose surface, it gets up and goes, and it kicks on that launch harder than ever before. So there's no question to me that this car is great. This is a great car. I'm a big guy and I can drive it without getting beat up. I've already driven it for about five hours this morning. Perfectly comfortable, heated and cooled seats, all the goodies. And it's fast, man, it squirts. Turbo lag is like, it has the, this crazy boost optimizing technology that is quite similar to uh, to anti-lag where it uh, where what it does is it rather than closing the throttle between shifts it leaves the throttle open and cuts the timing so the turbo stays spooled up in between the shifts which is uh, pretty excellent stuff there's zero drop in power when you shift it. balance is just great. These Pirelli tires, plenty, plenty of grip here. The wheels are a half inch wider than before. Oh good, the glasses did not fly out of the car. Really, really quick, really responsive. There's also like new interior, new steering wheel, new nav system. The nav system's awesome now. Did a really good job of it. And I am, I'm loving this thing. real question is, how do you handle progress? Because the four-cylinder and the turbo is the price of progress. It's more efficient, it's more powerful, the car's faster than it's ever been, but can you get used to that sound? I've been driving this thing for one day and I'm already used to the sound, and to me it's fine. Yeah, there's some STI down low, but there's also that Porsche rasp that we love and you get a little bit of turbo noise with it too. You get some pops and cracks on the downshifts. Really responsive and direct and fun. That's the most important thing, right? If you're gonna buy a Porsche, like it needs to be fast, it needs to be comfortable and refined, but most importantly, you know, it really just needs to be fun. And uh, this is, very, very fun. Ah, and of course in Portugal we have a man with an engine towing a wagon. Brilliant! That is some engineering right there. One more time up the road. Big power. You know, 
yeah, I, I miss the six-cylinder screeching howl. But I, I got to get on board with Porsche on this one. I really do. It, it's you, you can't argue with the kind of performance gains that they got out of going with this engine. I mean, it's really, really hard to. Anything they could do to a six would be totally incremental compared to the massive leap forward of the turbo motor. It's just such a good engine. And it just takes a beating. Just hammer it, hammer it, hammer it. Loves it. Absolutely loves it. Go, go, go! <laughs> and with these ceramics, you can break really late, too. It's really good. Really good. What's a lease on one of these again? It's got such, you know, it's got such a shove that wasn't there before. Oh, I forgot to mention the steering. The steering rack's directly out of the 991 turbo, so it's 10% more direct than before. Progress. Progress is wild. But my favorite thing about the engine is that it just doesn't die up top. There are too many turbo motors that die up top, and this one simply does not. Oh, look at this kind gentleman moving out of my way. Thank you, sir. I like the sound of it. I think it sounds neat. It's different. It's definitely different. It takes some getting used to, but I'm a fan, guys. It's real fast. I'm going to get in trouble. I keep running up and down this road like this. so much grip and there's so much finesse and and it really you know even with electric steering and even with all this this technology in between you and the car it, it talks to you and, and it's it's really great it's really great um i love it and uh and i think that you guys will too if you can get over the fact that it sounds a bit like an sti at idol see right there right there that's sti and then up here that's Porsche. It's good. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.